Hey everyone. This video is how to build and install a new firmware for your Flipper Zero. So this is helpful because different firmwares have different bug fixes. So sometimes it's useful to switch firmwares to another firmware for a particular bug fix. Also, a lot of my tutorials assume that you have some firmware you can build and the tutorials are just overlaid on top of the firmware. So let's get started. So the first step is to install the Git tools for Windows. And you can go ahead and just accept all of the defaults. So while that's installing, we can go ahead and search for a flipper firmware that we would actually want to use. So I usually use this GitHub enlistment. And then in the firmware options, there's a readme. And when you scroll down, it links to the mains of each one of these firmwares. Clicking on main for official firmware will take us to that repo. Oh, it looks like our get tools just finished installing. And then we can look at some of the other firmwares as well, clicking on main. And these are the different firmwares that are available. So for this demo, I'm going to go ahead and grab the official firmware. So click on the code button and then in the drop down, click the clipboard with the URL and it'll copy to your clipboard, a link to the repository. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and make a new folder to put the code in. So we'll just call this a repo. And then inside the repository, we'll make another folder for flipper. So we'll go ahead and open a command prompt. On Windows 10, you can do Windows R and then CMD. So we'll do CD backslash, CD repo, CD flipper. And this is the folder we just made. So we'll do a get clone dash dash recursive. And then we'll paste, which is just right click the URL that we copied from the website. And then this will take quite a while. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video. Okay, it's still installing stuff, but while it's installing, I'm going to go ahead and install the flipper tools as well that we're going to need the Q flipper desktop application. So go to flippers zero dot one slash update. And then accept the cookies, um, scroll down and say download Q flipper for windows. Okay, that should download fairly quickly. We can go ahead and open that and run it. Okay, we'll just go ahead and accept all the defaults. It's fine. Okay, we can move that window out of the way. Oh, it looks like our repo is finished synchronizing. So that's ready. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's there. So there's just the one folder that we cloned. And when we look at that, here's all the code. You're gonna go ahead and type FBT space updater underscore package. And that's gonna take a little while while it builds the firmware for us. Looks like Qflipper's done installing.
And when it's all done, you'll see it says the binaries can be found at dist slash f7-d. And in particular, f7-update-local. So if we go in there, and then there's our update local folder. And these are all the files we need to update the firmware. OK, I'm going to go ahead and launch the QFlipper application and then connect my flipper to the USB port. And then the next thing that I typically do is just go ahead and format the card. So I'll go into settings, storage, format SD card, and say format. So obviously make sure there's nothing on the card you want. No saved raw files from sub gigahertz or something, but typically everything I have, I've already checked into source control. Cool, so we can back out. We can see that there's nothing here. So we'll go into our SD card now and we'll go ahead and make a new folder. Doesn't really matter what you name it. So we'll say updated firmware, we'll go into that and then switch over to that dist update local. And I grab the resources tar file and just drag it over. Um, so this is the file that has all your assets. If you have a program like seven zip, you can look inside there and see all the different files. And sometimes all you need to do is copy one file. If, if you've rebuilt your firmware recently with just some minor changes. Then once that's copied, we copy all the rest of the files over, drag and drop the rest of them. Um, I do this just because sometimes the files are certain size. So for example, here's like the snake game. We can go ahead and extract that. Um, so this would be an example. If you were working on the snake game, you could extract it out. And then later you could copy that FAP onto your SD card. So let's switch back over to the flipper screen. Okay. Um, and we see that folder we made updated FW. So we'll go into that and then we'll go down and we'll find the one that's called update, just update, and then click on okay. And then run an app, click on okay again for local right arrow key. And then on your flipper, you'll start to see the new firmware installing. Hopefully three to five minutes later, your flipper will have updated itself. And then once it's updated, you should see the screen should say that it was successfully updated. So there you go. Firmware update success. Okay. And we click on it. And now we are running the new firmware that we just built, custom firmware. So if you already have the firmware installed and you're just trying to update a FAP, you can go in, find the old FAP and say delete. Go ahead and say delete. And then we will grab the FAP we extracted from the tar file and drag it back in. And there it is. And so now if we go into our applications and then we go to games, there's a the new version with the new FAP file we dropped in. So there you have it. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks a lot.